Yeah. Beta coming down and taking out some of those weekly lows going into the fair value gap and then charging for the highs by the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, were you guys green, or did you finish green, like, as a overall? Yeah. I I was green, yes. Okay. I'm, I was actually red, and then I just held, like, a, ma a maniac for those equal lows, and then at five, at 448, it gave it to us, or 458. Yeah. I kind of turned it green. <laughs> um, but those equal highs, I mean. Okay. Wait, what? On the one minute. Oh, um, oh, yeah, at, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, are you talking five. about these right here? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It wasn't that it was right. I remember I called. Oh, it was these right here. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I literally like, got, went into drawdown and held yeah. like a maniac for those. Now. I knew the last candle would do it. it yeah, I was I was live, and I was like, I predicted this whole up move like live, and it was just like the sloppiest delivery ever. And I'm like, Awful. all right, this is a, this is a buy yeah. model, but it's like a – I don't want to be offensive to anyone. Yeah. Um it's like a, a, a – I don't even know if I should say this, bro. <laughs> I'm saying it's cocktail hour. Now you said that, you got to say it. Uh, it's like a – dude, I, <laughs> instead of a buy model, it's like an autistic buy model. <laughs> uh, hopefully that didn't offend anyone, but uh, hopefully you know it's a joke. But I'm just so used to my friends saying stuff like that. <laughs> it's like a buy model. It's just a little off, you know. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. All right, Deli. <laughs> all, right, all right. So uh, when you come into or when we come this a week, like Mark said, um, you can just see like the amount of expansion we've gotten. Like this is bound to happen at some point, in my opinion. Um, it's hard for this not to happen. Like it's hard not to have a consolidation week especially after like we kind of got something there um i mean it was a little bit of accumulation there okay so i would count this but it wasn't as much as we've been getting this week um so yeah this is bound to happen at some point but i mean i made a twitter video yesterday i feel like it's fine when we get daily consolidation because most of us are like scalpers or day traders anyway so it's not really going to affect us on the higher time frame um but yeah it's like I think the main thing people wanted this week was a, a retracement down to here, and it's okay we didn't get it um, because, you know, I'm not perfect. Um, us not getting this low is still fine. Like, I'm, I'm still bullish regardless. This is still, like, an obvious buy model. Um, what do you What do you guys think about uh, not getting that low? Do you think it matters? Uh, um, No. Still bullish, regard like if we get yeah. the if we get the low, we're still bullish. If we don't get the low, we're still bullish, right? Yeah, because like the way I look at it is like when I go to the weekly chart, I pretend it's just like a five minute chart. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if I'm looking at this and I th and I'm like, if this if the five minute chart looks like this weekly chart, I still think we're going up to this two sixty four high. Like, I guess the same thing on on the day on the daily there. Like, if I think, yeah. like. I, I just like look at it on like a as a smaller time time frame chart and that's how I, that's how I like get yeah. my you know it's kind of like the it's kind of remember so it was like Thursday um if I go back to Thursday so Thursday it open when I was on mute like the the big thing I talked about was I was like or was it uh, the big thing I talked about wanting was that pull back to the equal lows before the upside. Um, and I believe it was, um, wait, was it Thursday? What day was it? What what day do we have the big pump? Oh, right here, right here. It was Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday. I remember I was like, at open, there's going to be times where like, we'll have equal lows at open. Okay. Um, where were they? They're... Oh, wait, this is MNQ. They're on NQ. Let me go back to NQ. And no matter the bias, it do, it's bullish either. Like, it's bullish if we take them or don't take them. So, like, if we go to Wednesday again, it was right here. So, no matter whether we took these or not, I was still bullish off open. Now, like, it's the same thing with a higher time frame right now. We don't have to take, just like in this example, how we knew there was buy set above here. 
This is going to be the better entry, obviously, if we can take those, but we don't need to. And you can see what happens later is, is we take buy set first, and then we just save them for later. So we still get both in the end, but what could happen in this situation and how this kind of compares to the daily is on the daily, if we go up here, I bet you we go back down to this daily low. So if we get this daily low, we're probably going to go up first. If we get this daily high, we're probably going to come back down to this daily low. So... Does that make sense to you guys? Hey, Ryan, if you look at the um, inverse for value gap from July 23rd, it's like we're just kind of flopping around in there. Like yeah. I feel like if we inverse that, we'll go to the high. Yeah, very, yeah, easily. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, so someone pointed this out the other day to me, and I'm like, oh. Um, I mean, technically, we're still – this is still valid too. See this one from the August? Yep. That's why, like – this would still be like we could come down here and we could have one of those days where it looks like it's going to be a trend day. And then before the daily candle closes, we'll wick up all the way up and then it'll come like this. Like that's why I was looking for this this week because we're still holding this regardless of whether we take this low or not. If this low is down here, then this would be less likely to happen because we wouldn't be holding the version. But this low is like high enough to where we'd take this low and hold the inversion at the same time. So it's like that's why this was also a valid prediction for this week because we would be holding both. Okay. From a targeting perspective, if you look at the continuous contract weekly, there's a fair value gap above the high that I think would be a reasonable target. Okay. Go into the weekly. Oh, yeah. See right. that little gap up there like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Um, do you have... adjust it to the... Oh, yeah, the I see it, I see it. There you go. Yeah. That, I think, is a reasonable target for the uh, yeah, end of the year. Fine. Yeah, but I feel like if we hit this, like, we're just so close to all 10 <laughs> highs. Like, I mean, obviously, if we take the high, it'll be great, but I feel like if it if it blasts through that high, that's where we'll go. That'll be the next one. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... Bro, apparently... ICT has his BS turned off, and then some people say he's it turned on, so I don't know. I just do whatever. But... Mark, do you know? What's that? Has has ICT ever, ever talked about B adjust? He always uses B adjust when he does his analysis. Okay, okay that's so why, that's why I He figured. says he does both, but I always see it on when he does it. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Um, Leopard, what are your thoughts about the, yep. the 30 second model this week? Uh, I honestly didn't even look at that 30 second model this week, to be completely honest. Any reason? Uh, was, not really. I was just more focused on, I had a, a bunch of new top step evals that I was more focused on passing and uh, whatnot. So I was more work focused on like getting just good setups okay. to get those uh, passed. So I've kind of pushed it to, to the aside, to the side this week, but for, according to options though, I mean, according to his results, it was still uh, good. So, yeah, I mean, the, for the 30 second model specifically, the better the, uh, the, the less it's obviously trying to be mechanical as possible, but like, I think the 30 seconds I noticed that work the best are the ones that are like, I don't know, the ones that, uh, when we take like a big, big swing low, mm -hmm. like, it, like something like really obvious like this, for example. And then yeah, the kind of like 2022 20, model style, but, but with the yeah. 30 second. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, after, obviously you'll have to talk to options, and he sure just shut up every yeah. day. Oh, but here he is. Oh, options. Oh, you there want he to speak? Is. Okay, okay, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? No, it was thirty seconds was good. It was just the PA is very misleading. Like it'll last couple of days. It'll give you signs that it'll fail, and it'll actually succeed. So it makes it really tricky to to manage it. Um, yeah. but w what you said is actually, uh, really good. There was one setup I didn't take cause it was outside of the window. Um, at seven, I think I had it noted. It's actually kind of what you referred to. It was at seven twenty two. Um, and what was happening where we're going down into the BPR and right before we violated the BPR, we actually gave it a 30 second setup right at the bottom of it. And that worked very nicely. It was Around seven twenty-two a.m. Yeah, I see it. Do you see, see that? The, the, like yeah. right here. So that long, like that's the bottom of. A, I think it was a five-minute BPR. Um, Interesting. So before we violated, we had a retrace, and then we went down again, 
and then there was actually another long um, around 755. Uh, I was away from my computer, but it was also a pretty clean one. Yeah, I mean, I have you have you like back tested whether the 30 seconds just like a BPR in general or just like a normal one? Because I get, I bet you if you wait for the BPRs only, they're high probability, or the inverse. Um, the inverses tend to be high probability, but what you'll see is that you can have a PA like this where it will go up and down and kind of reinverse itself a few times, and you need to have a really strong bias to know which way it's going to go because it can send you the wrong uh, the wrong way. Yeah. Like, look, if you look at 735, right, you have a, a BPR, but it actually... Uh, I don't think it would have delivered uh, in the 30 second. Like right here. Well, no, that one, no, the one at the bottom. We also have one at the right here. Go down. Oh, no, I further see, down. I see right here, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. But that one doesn't take like an obvious pivot low. Like it takes out a swing low, quote unquote, but there's no like pivot low it takes out. But, yeah. True, but it also created an inversion. If you look at a well, I guess that would be a negative thing for for a long. But there was a there is an inversion on the left to the downside. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Um, yeah, that's definitely something to look out for. Okay, interesting. And this is obviously at a time where you wouldn't even trade it anyways. But yep. options. You know where I'm having incredible success with a thirty second model is if you're actually in a in a in a zone like um a fair value gap on a higher time frame 30 second model is deadly for entries it gives you amazing entries like for yeah for very you long have, moves. like it sees of like hourly like if you're inside a daily or a, like four hour fair value gap and you get a reversal on the 30 second model and you enter it, i mean the risk is not that much and you can get massive moves at a very high premium or discount yeah yeah for sure um, so going back to Monday, um, if you go back to Monday's price action, again, this is a no news Monday. A lot of people say don't trade it, but like one of the indications that told me to trade Monday, if you guys were in stream, which was a pretty good stream, um, uh, but just really a displacement off open. So there's going to be Mondays where you don't get displacement off open. And there's going to be Mondays where you do get displacement off open. And by displacement, I mean, in the first 15 minutes of open, from like here to here, are we sweeping any sort of high? Are we sweeping any low? And are we getting fair value gaps? You can see, even if we don't have a bias here, like if you come into the market at 945 in hindsight and you saw this zone and, and you were like, okay, well, we just swept the high, we just created a bunch of fair value gaps, then you th should be thinking, okay, well, we're probably gonna get good price action because we just swept the high and the low, we just got displacement. Um, and this means, okay, the rest of Monday, things are going to be logical. And by logical, I mean, you're going to see a lot of PD array expressions, right? Or we're going to see a lot of PD arrays respect. It's like, you can even see here. Okay. Look how, like, look at how algorithmic this is, right? I know it's a Monday with no news, but lots of displacement off open. Um, you're going to see stuff like this to spec. Same thing with here. See how like algorithmic this is, right? And then you see just a really clean inversion off of that. Um, this is like my number one model here. Um, I'm sure Leopard can attest to this, but a lower time frame or a higher time frame FEG bounce with another inverse fair value gap right after that bounce. That's like such a good model yep. right there. So. I don't know. It's just such a good model. Uh, this is like, I know a lot of you like to jump around, but if, if you could only trade one model, this would definitely be it. Like a lower time frame or higher time frame for really get bounce. And then you don't take this long, but then you take like the, if we get like an inverse right here, you take it. And you're not always going to get this. Like this is not always a peer. Sometimes there's no fair value gap here. That's okay. But when we get it, it's really nice. Um, so looking at Tuesday real quick. Uh, let's see what happened on Tuesday. What are your thoughts on Tuesday, Leopard? Uh, Tuesday? Um, I don't know. Sorry, I was just looking at the UPS chart. I was trying to see, see what made oh, you take yeah. calls on that. I, I was going to ask you about that, but I don't mean to change, change the subject. But no, no, I was. I Let me look at Tuesday that. while while you explain UPS. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll go over UPS. Yeah, so UPS. 
if I go to the weekly chart and you guys just take like a super quick look at it, what do you see here? Yep, exactly, Mark. That's exactly the setup today. Like, just taking a quick look at this, what do you see? We were going for that swing high there. Yeah, but like, what makes you say that? We were, re we were basically delivering from that for the weekly for value gap down there. Yeah, exactly. Like, if this was the NQ and you saw this right here, like, this is the literally the model I just talked about. Like, if you could only have one model, like, this is it right here. Weekly oh, close above. Right. There's another confluence. If you scroll to the left, there's actually an order block that we bounce off exactly. Right here? Yes. See the top of that order block? Yep. So like really, a breaker. Yeah, yeah, breaker there. Okay. Slash order block. I guess you could consider this an order block because like, we close above it. I bet you it's like a monthly order block maybe. Oh, wait. It's a monthly breaker. So it's a monthly breaker. It's like a weekly change in state delivery. Lots of good things here. So price should end up coming up to this high. And that's like my first target. Now, once price hits this high, this is where you, I'm probably going to scale mo most. And then just like if we're NQ, you're going to see a lot of speed bumps here. Like this is going to be a speed bump. Like take some more scales here. Ultimately, I'm going to try to target like 200 for runners. I'm not sure if it gets that high, but it's still going to be a really good play regardless. But we're bouncing off fair value gap, bouncing off a monthly breaker, inversing weekly fair value gap. It's holiday season. Even the macro lines up with it, but just this chart is just great. And that's why I was all excited when I posted it that one day. I was like, this is primed. Like, I'm totally getting in this. And just, um, yeah, just really nice setup regardless of what chart this is. So, And then gold, I alerted gold by side this week. Um you can see we got it today we just touched it i think so gold buy side hit again just the reaction off of this says okay we're gonna go hit buy side so like you pr you basically like once you see a candle like this here and then this reaction and then combining with that with okay we have a high here high here high here what are these highs? They're low resistance liquidity. They're all consecutive. Lots of the entry and liquidity. Like a reaction of off of a fair value gap like this, and there's the, the nature of this low resistance liquidity says, okay, we should pump to this. Okay. Maybe you don't know it here. Like, I mean, it's a little difficult um, to understand right here. It might not always be easy to know the bias, but that's why you wait to see the reaction of the fair value gap. Like, someone asked me, um, Someone, I don't even know what happened to this person. Let me see if I can find them. And I don't even think I can find them in my DMs. Someone joined my Discord. They had no profile picture. And the second they joined, they said, what are your thoughts on gold? And we were inside this for real like at the time. It was like right here. I'm like, eh, I don't really know right now. I want to see what happens to this fair value gap, but I think bullish overall. And they're like, okay, thank you. And they showed me all like their personal account positions and they're all like took a lot. And there was just like, they're like a millionaire and this is like a live account. And he's like, dude, I took so many losses last week in gold. I need your help. And he DM me that one time. He has not DM me since I've not seen him in a live stream. I have no idea why he bought my premium. Um, but yeah, just, I, I kind of said, I'm like, well, you're going to need to manage risk on your own. I'm not going to be able to help you. But I mean, I'm pretty sure the bias is, bullish here also this signature and price as well i always say remember it's this signature and price this is one of those signatures and price you want to remember very quick down move very quick back up move if you look a little bit we kind of have a little channel going on here we get a quick down move going out of the channel causing retail to chase puts or shorts and then we have a really quick back up move almost almost even over this channel not quite but almost 
and then we end up breaking it eventually. So that's just a really nice signature and price you should remember at all times, no matter what chart you're looking at. Um, so is that quick down? Yes, exactly. And th and this signature and price is always going to be bullish and bearish. So this is always going to be bullish. If you ever see this at the highs, it's always going to be bearish. Um, and typically what it is, it's a little bit consolidation. We get a quick move down under that consolidation and then a quick move up with the fair value gap back up. So this is just important to remember on any um, anything you're trading. I don't care if it's lean hog. This is still going to be very high probability. So, All right, Leopard, let's hear your uh, opinion on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, I came in and I was watching that uh, four-hour BPR from uh, Monday. And my conditions were, as long as that held, uh, we had a little uh, LRL. We had a little LRLR here on the hour, hourly uh, back up to uh, 1614. Uh, kind of that little, yeah, right there. And then we had a little LRLR, like, kind of in the min, in like in this? the middle of there. Yeah, it was tiny, but it was yeah. there. So I figured at least that high high would get ran at 1614. And then I thought we would run Monday's high at 1687. But I think we had an SMT with ES uh, before 1687 got hit at, at, at that high. Oh, yeah, from, we did. On Monday's high. Yeah, we did. So... So so we didn't get that, and then uh, that was pretty much my thing. And I said if 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 we went below that uh, four hour BPR, then I expected us to go down to that weekly busy, which I thought we we were gonna get, we uh, we were gonna go down to yesterday, but we ended up hold uh, hold uh, holding that four hour instead. So yeah. I'm really surprised we didn't hit that four hour busy yesterday. But uh, that was that that was Tuesday. Um, yeah. yeah, I was just watching that uh, four hour BPR. Yeah, that was really nice. I mean, at this point, if you go back, like. I th I wanted us to dump below this on Tuesday as well, but we never really got. Again, I always say wait for the close for the confirmation, but the body kind of held. And at this point, I guess there wasn't really too much low resistance equity engineered. I mean, you kind of have two lows here, and then this makes a third. So yep. it makes more. It makes sense in hindsight, of course, everything does. But uh, you know. I guess three touches and then back up makes more sense for lower resistance equity line. I guess two touches and super high probability. So it makes sense why we bounced here um, instead of just going through it now because I feel like there wasn't as much liquidity engineered there. See, now now I would consider, okay, now there's three touches. Now I would expect us to break it the next time you went through. So this kind of move right here definitely threw me off guard a little bit. I mean, I... I <sighs> Again, these were lows. If we go back, these lows right here were from Tuesday last week at two, uh, um, two o'clock, and they were yeah. their Nvidia earning lows. Like we had Nvidia earnings, and you can see we end up hitting the high of the earnings. And I was like, okay, we left the lows. So again, you just you. I know it takes a while, but eventually we will go back, and. I was honestly surprised, like, we violated this, and this was actually overnight. This was Monday, and we hit equal lows down here, and I was like, okay, we violated this. I want these lows, but you have to scale these equal lows because that's just the nature, and okay, there's equal lows here. You have to scale here. You just, you can't hold past equal lows. I'm telling you, if you don't scale at equal lows or equal highs, you will, you're asking to get stopped out or reversed on 50% of time. Like if there's a price target or the, or a soup in the market where it happens most, it's equal highs and equal lows. Like we'll hit equal lows. And even though the bias st still may be bearish, like we'll hit equal lows and then we'll reverse, go back up your stop. And then we'll go back down. If these were a singular single lows, we probably would have just dumped. But the fact that we barely displaced this is like, okay, well maybe this isn't bearish after all. And then we ended up inversing this hourly that day. And I'm like, okay, this is definitely more bearish. And I think I ended up longing, but we were also still in that eight hour as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which that... We have yet to inverse. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I, I, I don't like using other time frames, but yeah, we held this eight hour as well. But well, the eight hours is an incredible time frame. Yeah. I recommend strongly recommend anyone use it because there's a lot of things you don't see on the other ones. And uh, another thing I just shared in the chat is on the four-hour BPR or the four-hour fairly value gap from yesterday, I shared a 
uh, an image. If you look at the CE of that, you'll see that it respected it. And then you had like um, at 2 p.m. an open right above that. That is a long entry, big time. Like when you see that it respected and an open at 2 p.m. right above it, you know what's going up. That's kind of why I along okay. there. So the body respected it. it yeah, the body respected it. I'm open it. to swipe down and up it goes with a little volume imbalance in there if you look on the lower time frame. Okay. That is a very strong long. Yeah, I see. Okay. And it also lined, uh, lined up with a, uh, I know, I don't really like using this, but um, it did line up with one of those tap the things in the hourly you can clearly see um this fair valley gap right here was formed at yeah two o'clock and then we bounce this is one o'clock this is the two o'clock candle right here so kind of lined up with that little algorithmic time thing as well i mean i guess it's hindsight but it makes sense because i mean even without using that like tap the stuff like why would you not expect to bounce after such a big expansion move in the first place? Like, I feel like that was already given. So I know it's hindsight, but we got a big expansion move already. You could even have guessed, you could even have longed there without knowing that was there. Also, the interesting thing is if you look at the three o'clock candle, it, it basically wicked down into that volume imbalance and then shot back up. Yeah. Yeah. 3 p.m. Uh, one hour. 3 p.m. one hour. From yesterday. Oh, right here. Uh, from yesterday, oh. from Thursday, 3 p.m. Oh, right here. Where's the, the volume Right into that volume imbalance that was left at 2 p.m. and then shot up. Where's the volume imbalance? If you look on the um, um, one hour or lower, you'll see it. Okay. Or maybe the 15 minute. Oh, I see it. Yeah. 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 Never got it. Sat there open and then boom. Yeah. Volume imbalances are incredible draws. Yep. Like you'll never see a big move without the volume balances fold, from my experience. A lot of times. Oh, so there's a there's a short the other afternoon. And I oh, it's right here. A bunch of people were in chat and I basically said I'm like I think it was Sleepy who asked me, I'm like, yo, what play should I take? And I said, short if this woman is inversed. And at this point I knew we were in a higher time frame P D Ray. But I basically said we were like I think we were like right here and I'm like, um, by the way, this is a rejection of block. I just hope my bias is right here. Well, if my bias was right and the bias was bearish, this rejection block wouldn't have mattered. But you can see if I draw a CE of this, I mean, it's not the cleanest, but I mean, I don't know. I guess you can kind of argue CE of the Swick was rejected. But anyways, I felt like this was a rejection block because... Do the quadrants on that. The, the four quadrants. Okay. What you'll see a lot of times, it'll come down to the lower quadrant. Like if you if you take that wick and you divide it into four quadrants, yeah. like at 75 and 25, you'll see it comes down to the lower quadrant, comes back up, and then bounces off the CE the next time. So we come back down... Okay, so we do bounce out the point seven five. The body kind of respects the point fifty, and then we just go up. But um, the thing that made me see think that pattern a ton. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Someone was like, "Well, why well, do you know those are rejection block?" Um, I think just like the nature of this wick, this wick wicked so far down into low day. Not only could you see this wick on the one minute, but you could also see in the five minute. See this. And I think because of both those combined, I'm like, well, that's a pretty big wick on the both the one and the five, even on the three minute. See how, so so you know how sometimes on like the one and three we'll get a big wick, but on the five minute it won't be a wick. It was like a wick on like every time frame here. See this? See the all one? the respect to see. Yeah, on every single time frame it was a big wick, even the four minute, even the five minute. So because of that, I felt like, okay, we don't really need the sweep load day again here, and I felt like this was a rejection block. You're not going to see this a whole lot. Like, yeah, this is pretty rare in my opinion, but um, definitely definitely just like the nature of, okay, 
all the one, two, three, four, and five minute time frame had a big wick here. And typically, if you see that, I just, if I do ever short this, I will to be safe scale at the CE. I don't really like rejection blocks. Um, I don't really use them too much, but I probably use them once every like two or three weeks. But just to be safe, if you ever see a big wick, scale it the CE just in case. And again, to draw that, all you want to do is draw from the zero to the one, and then the the midpoint of that, okay, from where the wick begins. So here, this point five is the CE. Um, and then just in case, like I'll scale some there instead of actually waiting for the low. And that's only when I see like a big giant wick. It doesn't happen a lot, but just in case you want to save yourself or let's say you don't want to scale. Maybe you just put your stop to break even. Um, like I think sleepy was in the short and I remember I was spying in the chat. He, he saw the reaction. He's like, okay, I'm putting my stop to break even after this candle because I think he, I think he actually inverse this. He jumped the gun a little bit, which is fine because we did, we did actually deliver from this for a value gap. So he kind of jumped the gun a little bit, which is fine. Okay, so he took this one because he saw he saw by ten we were delivering for a fair value gap already, and he put this out the break even when he saw the reaction off this. So, wicks are deadly. Like I know guys who build their whole trading model on them. They do standard deviations on them. Yeah. They buy a CE with the bodies and, and look for the seventy five percent like wick. I just hey, I've, I've used liquidity too much, so it's like I can't buy a wick if it's a low as as well. You know. Um, and yeah, no liquidity is the best, but sometimes when you get that wick, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to do just a quick review of today in general, and then I'm going to get off. So I'm going to want to go too long cause I'll have to eat dinner soon. But so going over today and in, in general, um, I knew Jay Paul speaking, um, I don't really know what to expect. Whenever you see, whenever you see this and and there's not an SMT, that's like the worst price action in my. That's, it's not bad price action. It's let's just say it's not my favorite. So I don't. I think if we look at all three indexes today, let's see. So I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. Let me see if we can pull up ESC. Okay, so if we look down here, okay, look at this. We have a low here. We don't create an SMT. We have a low here. We do not create an SMT. We have a low. We have a low here. We don't create an SMT. See this? See how there's like a fail? It's like not an SMT. Like this is my uh, my least favorite thing ever in the market because it's like I know there's bullish. I know it's bullish, but it's like so weird because NQ almost came down and then it just doesn't. And there's not even anything that there's no SMT or anything. Now let me see if I go to like the one if that changes. Was there ever an SMT off the bottom today? That is the question. Okay, so this is earlier. Um, you can see like no SMT here. So you make a higher low here both times. Ooh, so there was a one minute SMT and this is actually a good one. Yeah, so see this right here? See how like major this looks and it combines with the inverse on YM? This is why you gotta look at YM sometimes. So I'm actually just seeing this for the first time. So this would have made me a little more confident. However, I did not see this. So do you guys see how, do you all see the divergence here? And I know it's like, oh, I don't wanna look at YM. It's another, uh, it's another just pointless, pointless chart. I don't want to overanalyze. Like I said, I look at YM once every two weeks. If I really don't like where price is at, 
and yeah, this would help me a lot. So I wish I did see this, but you can clearly see why I'm took the low here. Well, NQ and ES held it, and yeah, this this was just textbook long, man. Such a textbook long. I was waiting for this to violate the short, and we just never got it. Um, and someone put a thumbs down emoji. I don't even know. Their name was Ella or something. Let me see. I DM'd them. They put a thumbs down emoji. And then I went to DM them. I'm like, hey, with the thumbs down emoji, you realize like the short never triggered, right? And she never answered. And now she's not in my Discord. So I'm not sure if she, she probably just doesn't know ICT or something. Because obviously you can see the short never triggered. So the, the, the short would have been if it closed below. But yeah, I don't know what happened to her. She never even responded to my DM. It kind of pissed me off. But yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Um, but yeah, in hindsight, I didn't know this was an SMT. This I would have probably longed this. Um, and I wouldn't have longed this. What would I have actually longed? What would I have actually longed here? Yeah, I would have longed the inversion after. Like, see how this is textbook right here? Delivery from this for VI gap, we get the textbook inversion, and the textbook inversion has an internal high where we don't hit it when this activates. So we deliver from here, textbook high, and we don't hit it. So that was really nice. Um, and again, that's just the same model you'll see over and over and over again. This is the best model in the market, in my opinion. It was the exact trade I took today. It was awesome. Yeah, I was. Uh, I wish I. I was driving, so I was on my phone. I had no idea that was an SMT. That was when I was going for class. So I said, "I'm like, okay, if this breaks, I'm gonna short." But it never did, unfortunately. Um. And yeah, that Ella person, whoever that was, definitely was wanting signals, and she probably shorted anyways. And yeah, she probably, I, she probably just confused. I'm not really sure, but hey, that's uh, fine. You got another one right here. See it again? This was another great one. We hit the fair value gap, confirmation close above without hitting the high. Um, I bet some of you guys saw this. Same thing. Um, I I just got I really got unlucky at this time. Um, I shorted and then I long. The long worked. The short failed. So I really got unlucky. This was the textbook short in my opinion. We took the high, barely swept over. This should have worked. I think Jay Powell speaking. That's why I did it. And this was a dad low play. So that was a really nice play. Just didn't work for some whatever reason. Even the five minute close blow. Um, and then I ended up reversing position when I ended up longing. And you can't even see this fails technically. See this? Like I just got caught in a really bad time there. Just it kept it failed both ways. I I held the long because um I don't even know why I held the long. I think I held it because I saw something in the one. Oh, I saw this. I held it because I saw this. I was like, okay, we, we inverse this. And if the bias truly was short here, this would have rejected 100%. Like this would 100% reject if the bias was short. But it didn't. So I was like, okay, well, the bias probably is long here. And I know it's disrespected back to the downside. But if the bias is short, this would have worked the first time. So well, one thing I want to add, and that what gave me confidence in the long, is if you have a 4 p.m. close from the day before that hasn't been tagged, you basically have an overnight gap that needs to be filled. And when it starts uh, spooling up, that's typically where it's going. So okay. you know, I would look, I'd advise everyone to look at the 4 p.m. close from the day before and see if it's been tagged in the 9.30 to 4 p.m. session of the following day. So you're really basically filling that gap. I don't know what ICT calls it, but yeah. I, I've been trading a long time using that 4 p.m. close. 
So this that was one. my exit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Because it's got to, like, basically fill in what it didn't do overnight, because if you look at the regular trading hours, you'll see the gap, although it uses 415. Yeah, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Shepard, you've seen how incredible that draw is. It's pretty wild. Hey, can you see, this is, this is, I don't know if this is actually, like, legit or not, but if I draw the the bottom of the RTH gap right here um, from this open, the body does respect it as support. I'm not sure if that may be lucky, but pretty interesting there as well. But, yeah, if you got caught up in this, that's just really unlucky. I don't – not that this is just so not clean at all. But this was pretty clean. This was pretty clean right here as well. Right, you got a little little sweep of liquidity here. You see that displacement that interests me. It's like, oh, okay, finally we, we get a decent down candle. And then displacement right there. Retest the inversion. Go back up. Okay. Uh, yeah, Bruce, I'm, I'm about to be done here in two minutes. Um, I'll upload it to YouTube. So, again, just this was pretty clean. I wouldn't have trusted this. If if I saw this fail, I would not have I would have trusted this specifically. But we this was kind of not good price action, so I maybe I wouldn't have trusted this in lifetime. I don't really know. This is this one right here is the only one I would have trusted because this was pretty good volatility. So, I mean, I would have trusted this for sure, but after seeing this, I would have definitely had trust issues with this one because it was kind of the same scenario. We got this one after a bunch of consolidation, and then this one just totally fails. But uh, I started following your model originally, Ryan. One thing I remember, and, and it still applies, is it seems that the best inverses are after a liquidity sweep always. Yeah. The most reliable ones. Yeah, for sure. After liquidity sweep or delivery off of a higher time frame for value gap. But typically that delivery off a higher time frame for value gap, we are sweeping liquidity still. Lower time frame, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like that's stuck in my mind and that's really been helpful. Yeah. Um, this one, got to look out for this one. This was a two minute never inversed. See? I, I think I demoed this and I got out as soon as I saw that the two minute wasn't inversed. So it was inversed on the one, but if you go to the two, it never was inversed. So that wasn't valid. Um, and then we come back up to it later, and this is when I was like, yeah, I'm d this pr price is just not good at this point. Come back up to it later, disrespect it, respect it, disrespect it, respect it, disrespect it. And, yeah, this price action wasn't great the afternoon. Um, I was tapering all afternoon. I took this long. Um, and you, wow, I just realized who was on the, who was on the afternoon stream? What do you notice? What do you notice about this? You might not jump out at you. Yeah. I actually alerted this play for a rock chat. Really? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think MNQ, I think MNQ closed below, and you can see NQ didn't. And I was like, yeah, I'm still bullish here. And I was not looking at NQ at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that was his mic drop. Grandma said dinner's ready. <laughs> That's basically, at the end of the day, it was just a pure seek and destroy profile. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. After another, there was no PDRA respect mm -hmm. in the middle at all. Uh oh, he's typing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Grandmother. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear me no no we can't hear you i can hear you can't hear you ryan yeah you're muted let's see if he can unmute here <laughs> hey he's muted <laughs> on that note i've got to run i got a dinner but i uh, hope you guys all have a great weekend yeah. it's been a pleasure and look yeah, forward to the same, profitable yeah. week Yep, we'll have see you Monday. Weekend, yep. You guys have a great weekend. See you Monday. Take care. Yep. Go. Hey.
a really easy way to point out a market maker buy model is if we ever have a market structure shift from a high that rejected a fair value gap. See how there's like a two minute fair value gap here and we rejected it? Or I think it was a three minute. Yeah, three minute. See how we have a high inside of a fair value gap and then we have a market structure shift over it? This is actually a, a great sign that we're going to be in a market maker buy model. So it didn't matter that this was bad price action. It, I still was bullish. So uh, that was that. Um, and yeah, really, I think we're I th still think it's a possibility we go here Sunday night, but we'll see you next week. So uh, yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, I will upload this recording. I'll probably upload this publicly on my YouTube. Um, And uh, yeah, looks like this one hour adverse as well. So I mean, that's technically bullish, but uh, yeah, I'll see. Oh wait, never mind. No, never mind. Don't use, don't use RTH. So <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. We got but, ten more hourly candles on the on on yeah. the way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, I'll see you guys later. Um, I gotta go eat dinner and stuff, and and you know maybe put up a christmas tree but yep. uh, <laughs> who has who put their christmas tree up already mine was up november 1st why that's what she wanted that's what she got oh, so God. <laughs> all right well i'll see you guys later um maybe tomorrow night we can play poker if anyone wants to play poker I'm hell yeah down. or even later tonight i'll, I'll play yeah. if anyone wants to but uh yeah i'll see you or guys among later. us what? yeah what? we can play among us tonight Ooh. all right all right, see you guys. Later, guys.